viewers and students, welcome again. This is Eteta Morogoro, I'm Basuku Nyabenda. I'm going to share with you um, the topic, the Form for English topic, reading literary work, and I'm going to deal with the novel, the interview, uh, which is written by Patrick Ngogi. Uh, I'm pretty much sure that many students have not come across this novel, that I know. And I hope by listening and watching to this video, you are going to enjoy a lot and you are going to gain a lot of information and maybe it can be one of your best material to use when it comes to answering examination. Uh, not only that, but also learning and changing your life in one way or another. Yes, interview. The interview is set in Nairobi, Kenya. That's the place where the story is set. And to begin with, I'm going to give you the general summary, the general summary of, the, uh, of this novel. Yes, you see, it talks about this young boy, Joy Kimani, uh, who uh, was a graduate, a graduate of um, a, a secondary school, and uh, there was a problem that he did not finish the school fees. As a result, he could not get uh, certificates. And not only that, but also he could not join a college simply because uh, he was not having certificates. As a result, uh, he decided to find some ways uh, of living uh, because by the time he was living with a brother somewhere in, in, in Nairobi. And so he tried to find works here and there so that he can earn a living, uh, though it was not that easy. You see, now right here, uh, he got, he saw an announcement of, um, uh, of a certain uh, job somewhere and so uh, he decided to go and apply for that. But uh, there is a problem that when he goes for interview at the City Soap Industries, uh, he arrives there late. He arrives there late. Uh, there were some reasons as to why he was late. It is just because there happened a certain accident as he was waiting for a, uh, for a matatu in Tanzania, we say Daradara, and then he decided to, uh, to help the person who was involved in an accident. As a result, he was late for interview. However, uh, God's plan at the end, that uh, helping uh, to that uh, old lady who was involved in an accident became uh, his way out in life. You see, now, <clears throat> I'll go now. That was just a general summary. Now I'm going to give you chapter summaries that I'll be going chapter after chapter so that at least you get the general uh, knowledge of the, uh, the, the, the book itself. Yes, to, to begin with, chapter one. Uh, you find that, that chap in chapter one it just reveals us, uh, to us the way uh, Joy is going to attend the interview. So she, he wakes up. Uh, prepares him, uh, himself for, uh, for an interview, and remember that he's having uh, he's, ha he's having no certificates, but he's just going to attend the interview because he applied anyway. I don't know how it could be, but it, all in all, he went to attend the interview, and then he should know that uh, Joe Kimani, uh, Joe Kimani's parents uh, were killed in the ethnic cleansing. Uh, so Joy and his sisters were shattered uh, by their uh, uncle, uh, Uncle Jotham, somewhere in, uh, in Nairobi. So you can see how it happened. That there was a very, this very, very good family which was having at least four children. And there was this Joy Kimani, there's Mary, Rosie, and there's David. But uh, there, there happened this ethnic uh, cleansing. People were killing each other. Uh, under the basis of uh, ethnic, uh, you can say, uh, in the, the, the word which we are, we, we are used to is tribalism. But then that is not tribalism, it was just ethnic uh, cleansing, so people were killing each other. And among those people who died in that incident were the parents of Joe Kimani. And that's how it happened. And so the children, including Joe Kimani, were taken, to, were taken by uncle. Uh, and they took shelter at their uncle's place, that is uncle Jotham. And uh, due to this, uh, due to this, um, these children did not get proper education at the beginning. You see, because they were not having that very good support. Now, um, when he was going to the interview, 
uh, he arrived at the bus stop and then when he was waiting for the bus stop, it was very, very bad, bad day for him because um, the buses were not, uh, were, not, uh, uh, were not very many that day and so he could he stayed for so long waiting for the bus to take him to the city bus and stop industries. And then it happened that as he was standing at the bus stand, there's this old lady who was very close to him, but she seemed to be mentally disturbed. And so she decided to cross the road um, uh, all of a sudden, and of course he was, she was knocked down by a certain matatu, that's Daradara. And then, I don't know how it happened, but maybe under that plan, uh, Joe died and saved that uh, old lady. Although there were some injuries and the like, but uh, at least he tried to call for help. And later the ambulance came. And so when the ambulance and the police came, they took Joe and that old lady to hospital. That's how it happened. Now, uh, by, by doing so, he was late for at least 45 minutes for the interview. That's how it happened. You see. You are going to, to attend an interview now, you are late for 45 minutes. Now, that takes us to the uh, second chapter of the story. Uh, at the hospital now. Remember, they have gone to hospital now. When you go to hospital and it is an accident, it is not that easy. Because there is an interview from the doctors, how it happened and the like. There is an interview from the police officers, how it happened. So all that, remember, it, was, then it took a very long time. He was very depressed because now he was missing the interview. You see, he was missing the interview. Uh, there is this person, Fred Mercy. Uh, he tried to comfort Joe uh, because of that depression he was having and because of that old cuckoo. Old cuckoo, that is, uh, that is Bibi in our Kiswahili. Uh, you can say Bibi. Uh, so uh, he was very depressed because uh, of that old uh, cuckoo who was suffering on the bed. Uh, Joe was not uh, in good position. But then, in the same chapter, we get a flashback uh, on how Joe's parents were killed. Uh, and I have already told you some, uh, a little bit uh, when I was giving you the general summary, how it, it happened. And so, uh, it, it, it happened that when the children were sleeping, and then those people were killing each other, came to the uh, ground. Of course, mother, father came out, went out of the house to try to fight them, but they killed him uh, on the spot. And when the mother tried to go and help the husband, they killed her as well. The children were in the house right there trying to watch what was happening to their parents, and so the parents died in front of their eyes. But at least they managed to, and they managed to escape, and so through some hard ways, they, they reached the they reached Nairobi city, and together with their brother David, so Uncle Jotham took them in and gave them a shelter. That's how it happened. That's how it happened. Then, uh, now let's go back. Let's go back to the hospital. Joy at the hospital now uh, the, was to be interviewed by the police officers, especially Magnet Kinyua, uh, who was the inspector, chief inspector. Uh, had to interview Joy on what happened real at the area of accident and. Joy narrates uh, the story on how it happened to the, uh, from the beginning to how, what, when the accident happened. Uh, gave them, uh, gave the, the, the full details and of course it was very, very clear details. And uh, there was nothing to hide anyway. And so after the interview, uh, Chief Inspector Margaret Kinyua asked the uh, Constable Kilonzo to take Joy to, uh, to the interview then, to the area where he was um, he was going to attend the interview. And so uh, that, is, uh, that is when uh, Joy and Constable Clonzo uh, leave, left, left, left the hospital. But before leaving, Joy still, though he was late, still managed to go first to, uh, to visit again the old cook who was suffering. You can see the heart of this boy was not uh, normal. Uh, it was extraordinary, caring, you see. Now, as he's there, uh, as he went to visit uh, the old cook, we find uh, Dr. Ocheng examining the old cook right there. And of course, um, the doctor gives thanks to Joy, uh, gives thanks to Joy for saving, for, uh, for, for calling in time. And of course, uh, 
uh, he asked, he was very surprised. You know, if you are not related to a person, but spending all your time attending that person was not a normal thing. And so a doctor had to ask if at least there was any relationship between Joe and the old cook. Joe said, no, I'm not even related. I don't know her. It's just that I saw her in this situation. I got myself in so that I can save the situation. That's how it happened. So after, uh, after, after that, Joey rushed into the city of Soko Industries uh, for the interview. Of course, he was ready for 45 minutes. Uh, that you can see how the situation was. That takes us to, to chapter 3. Takes us to chapter 3. Now, at, at that place, uh, when he arrives at the city of Soko Industries, a very big building, uh, he meets uh, Mr. Daniel Kung. Uh, Daniel Kung. Uh, uh, is just there uh, where, where, where there is this is secretary uh, at the reception, there is a receptionist who receives the uh, Joy Kimani at Daniel Kuhn's office and uh, after confirmation that Joy Kimani, the one who was supposed to attend the interview, uh, he, he, he came to realize that uh, Joy was late for some minutes because it was supposed to be uh, 8.30, but he came uh, 45 minutes later. So that's how it happens. At, uh, all together, uh, he allowed, she, allowed her, uh, she allowed him to go to, to the office where she was supposed to attend the interview. And so uh, another thing which is different is that there's, uh, there's this girl, that's a, uh, there's this girl who was uh, very close right there, and that is the receptionist. That's Gladwell, uh, the receptionist, uh, is this, uh, the same same person whom we are afraid they are who, who was a friend to Joy. They were close friends in the past. Of course, they they, they met at the choir, and so they became uh, when they were still still singing choir and the like, and so uh, they were in, 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 in the choir. And so they, they became friends. Now Joy meets Gladwell at that office, and the one the same person who receives it, him. And so at least there was this uh, sort of intimacy which was not very bad. The atmosphere was not that hostile uh, at the time. Now, Joy enters uh, Mr. Mr. Kung's and uh, Kung and finds a lot of young men and women uh, waiting for the interview. And of course, the secretary uh, goes to Mr. Kung and informs him that uh, this is Joy Kimani and has come for the interview in the Reich. But because it was too late, uh, Mr. J uh, Dan Ki Kung uh, asks Joy to come later, maybe uh, to come later at, at, at noon, uh, so that he could be attended as well. So Joy had to go back uh, because it was not a, a proper time to arrive. So at least he is uh, he's, uh, he's, uh, very happy uh, to, to, that the boss has agreed to meet him later. It, will, it could be very bad if we said, no, I don't need to see you anymore. But at least he was given a second chance that, okay, come at noon, we can meet, we can, we can talk about this one. And he lives, he lives with Gladwell. Uh, he, 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 he was living and, and Gladwell stopped him. He's, he's so impressed to see her. Anyway, as I told you that they were friends, they were close friends in the past, and so he, uh, she was very impressed to see him, and he was so impressed to see her. And the racket, so they arranged some meeting later in a day. Uh, they arranged how to meet in in, 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 in in some hours, some hours later. Okay, now uh, Debbie, no, Joy Kimani was not ready to miss the time once again. So at 11.30, he arrived at so uh, Sita Soap Industries for the interview, as it was a promise from Mr. Kung. Um, however, Mr. Kung was, was not uh, in a position to, uh, to, uh, to recruit Joe Kimani because uh, he failed to meet the right time. And so uh, he was told that, okay, uh, the policy of the company does not allow uh, these people who cannot keep time. And so Joe didn't secure that uh, opportunity. And so he was, uh, Joe was asked to leave the place uh, without any employment. That's how it happened. Yeah, so that was the end of chapter 3. Then when you go to chapter 4, is when we are introduced to David now, the brother of Joe, Joe's brother, uh, trying to comfort 
Because when Joel arrived at home, he had to give the story to David. And so it was very, very bad luck and bad day. And Joel was in depression, high depression. And so David had to comfort her, uh, his young brother. Yeah. However, uh, Joy uh, managed to tell uh, his brother, David, how he met Gladwell at the office. And of course, Joy and Gladwell later met and went to uh, Ogden uh, Cinema and they also went to eat uh, to get some, uh, some food at Silver Moon Restaurant. You can see that they talk a lot. Uh, but then there was this uh, Gladwell's sister. Remember, you have to remember this name. Uh, this is uh, Georgina. This is very, 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 very important name. Try to remember that one because you will use it later. Yeah. And so when uh, they were talking, Gladwell tried to give a certain short story about uh, her sister Georgina, who was seriously sick, suffering from tuber process. And we come to learn more about Georgina later. So try to keep that name in your mind. You see. And then. Uh, Joy tried to narrate a story once again to um, to Gladwell on how he managed to rescue all the cuckoo back in the accident. But this story was not good to Joy because he didn't feel good explain, explaining that or narrating that once again. And so they had to change the topic and start talking about other things. But still, this is sort of cuckoo did not leave Joy in peace because he was trying to think, suppose uh, that old cuckoo dies, so she will be, she be buried anonymously as someone who is not having relatives and the right. That was a very, very, um, that a very, very uh, distressing uh, and troubling situation in the mind of Joy Kimani. But on the other hand, he tried to find how can he find the relatives of that old cook so that at least they come and help in, in one way or another. So he was having that one in mind to find, he believed there must be a family somewhere. There must be a family somewhere for this old cook. It is not, a, uh, it is not a proper that he is, she's going to be buried anonymously if at all he dies. How she dies? Yes. Uh, now. Joy decides to go to the hospital once again to find, to see at least the progress of the old cook right there in the hospital. And so he went to, to, the, to, to ward number three and of course he met uh, Mildred Amiti, a nurse who is attending the cook. See, so he meets that nurse and that nurse gives him a brief summary of cook's progress since he left. And of course, after staring at her and the like, uh, the, 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 after having some staring at her and having some more conversation with the nurse, and then he leaves, eh, promising to visit uh, the following day. That's how the, 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 how, that, that's how the, 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 the chapter ends. And so, uh, you can see the connection between old cook and joy. They don't know each other in any way. But at least Joe is very, very touched that he's attending her as if uh, it is a real relative. But they don't know each other. You see, now what happens here in chapter 5? When Joe goes back home after visiting the hospital, he's having sleepless night. He cannot get to sleep. He's not comfortable. No peace at all. He's in trouble. The heart is uh, in trouble. And so... Um, He's thinking of the, the situation in which the old cook is and also he is trying to think on how to get the relatives of uh, of uh, the relatives of uh, that old cook. How, how, how can he how can he solve this problem? So he couldn't get enough time uh, to sleep, he couldn't get, get uh, time to sleep and so he went to sleep to sit in the uh, living room and of course uh, David, his brother came uh, to chat with him so that at least he can get uh, some sort of comfort. And then, uh, as they were talking, uh, as they were talking, uh, David uh, uh, break the news and um, joy that he has secured a certain part-time job for him at the National Library. And by by having that information, joy was at least at ease, and so he managed to go to get a sleep, and so they went to they went to sleep. So in the morning, Joy reports at the National Library where he was received by Mr. Julius Kimmel. 
uh, who was Delhi's old schoolmate, and so uh, that's how Joe gets a part-time job because uh, uh, Julius Kimeu was the schoolmate of uh, David, and so using that uh, intimacy, uh, they could man uh, he, he managed to uh, give a part-time job to um, Joe, who was like here, a young brother to him as well. That's how it happened. So. Uh, uh, after some time, as he was reading, he came to realize that his mind was not sorted, and so he asked me for permission to go to hospital to check uh, the old lady once again. I don't know what was happening, but at least that's how it was. And at the hospital, he finds another situation which is not okay. He found that there was a very, this very big crowd, a very big crowd. People were surrounding, and it was. Uh, uh, a certain pastor who has this whole one decided to, uh, to 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 fly himself from the uh, eighth floor because he was uh, tested uh, HIV positive, and that was very very another disturbing situation in Joy's mind. How could a pastor be infected with HIV? How can he test positive with HIV uh, with HIV? That was another troubling mind in Joy's brain. Anyway. All in all, Joy meets the friend, the medic, and uh, the two uh, go to say to visit to visit uh, the old cook right there. And he finds that Dr. Oche gives them a summary of Cuckoo's condition that at least she was conscious, but memory was gone. She was okay. she was conscious, but with no memory, couldn't she couldn't remember anything. Now that was another big blow. To Joy, because the case of Joy is to find the relatives of the old cook. But now that uh, old lady, although uh, she's conscious, she cannot remember anything. In other words, there is no way Joy is not is, is going to get the home to that uh, old lady. Another case, another uh, another troubling uh, another troubling situation to uh, to Joy. Yes. Now with the chapter six. Uh, now, when Joy goes to the hospital, uh, Cook is very happy to see, to see. Not because he has, not, not because she has remembered it, Joy, but at least she's just happy to see Joy. That's how it happens. And of course, she breaks, uh, she breaks him for saving her life uh, by spitting on his face. That's a traditional. I don't think it is only in Kenya, but uh, all over in Africa, uh, uh, that's uh, some kind of bracing uh, when uh, old, uh, old lady like this one spit on a face of a child. So, uh, this old lady asks for discharge and says, Joy will direct her to her home. And now, this is what, uh, uh, what uh, gives us the information that she is not, uh, she's still not in good memory. Because uh, she asks Joy to take her home, but while uh, Joy has no knowledge of that old lady anyhow. Uh, so this is the evidence that she was not uh, good at memory. At memory. And now if I am memorizing, now here you have Dr. Chen and Fred and Joy trying to reason uh, to get her to together what is to be done to cook, but later they agreed to meet the foreign day, and so they were trying to solve this, uh, this riddle. How, how do we save this uh, old lady? Together, uh, these three decide to sit and decide on how to help. Now, Joy uh, is still thinking of that person who flung himself because he uh, was posted, tested positive, HIV positive as a pastor. Try to think, how did it happen? But Dr. Oche informs him that HIV gets anyone, including bishops, doctors and other important dignitaries. So you can see that it is happening like that. That uh, HIV AIDS does not choose someone, uh, provided that you don't take precautions, you can, get, you can get infected. That is from Dr. Chen. Yeah. Then, uh, after leaving the hospital now, uh, he thinks of Gladwell and decides to go to the choir practice and of course there he makes him uh, Gladwell and they practice, uh, they, 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 after the practice, they walk home together. And now Joy uh, tells Gabriel of Cook, but she doesn't seem to be happy by the way Joy is getting uh, concerned. You see, Joy is very concerned with the old Cook, but Gabriel is 
somehow away as to why someone who you are not related with takes your time and energy all this time. And however, Joy changes the topic and uh, tell her that he has, uh, uh, has secured that part time job at the National Library. And so, uh, at least, Daniel was happy. But later on, they talk of Pastor who jumped from the eighth floor. Then that says, even her sister now is when you get that name once again. I told you, you have to keep that in your mind. At this juncture, uh, Brad tells Joy that even her sister Georgina was HIV positive. Remember, at the beginning, it was mentioned that he was suffering from tuberculosis. But here, uh, Brad reveals that Georgina was suffering from uh, HIV, uh, HIV AIDS. So you have to keep that one in your mind. Now, when you go to chapter 7, chapter 7, uh, Joy recounts the days even to his brother. But David, David tried to convince him not to go on with that issue. Not to go on with that issue. Try to forget about that case. But uh, the next day he went to work but did not go to this. And so, Ah, there's this advice from the elder brother that please don't, don't, don't deal with this one here. It will take your time and you won't solve this case. And so please just give up that one. And of course the next day he did not go to visit. But I don't think it continued like that because the heart was still burning as to how. So uh, the next day Joey goes and Dr. Chen gives him a brief summary of Koku's accusation on him. Why had not shown up the previous day? So, complained the wrote as to why, uh, uh, as to why uh, Joy did not visit the previous day. But at least now, Cook talked to and said that her home was Kariobang. Now they know where to start. That was a good start. At least they knew now that, okay, so this old lady comes from Kariobang. You see? And Having known now where to start, they think they thought of starting a search, eh? home to home. Uh, that was a hunting from one home to another. That's the mission they thought of uh, that they should visit now. Uh, they should visit now uh, every home uh, to, to to find this uh, home of the old cook. And so uh, back at work, Joy receives a call from Brad who informs him that she has got the job at the city of industries. They plan to meet and have drink together, but the, uh, remember, uh, the, the, he remembers the house hunting mission with Dr. Ocheng. Remember, uh, Joe is working at the, the National Library as a part-time. Now that the secretary tells him that you have secured a job. At, remember, he went to the interview very late, but at least Glad tells him that you have secured a job at the City of Soap Industries. Uh, that was very good news to Joy as well. And uh, of course, uh, the mission which was there uh, was to hunt the home of the old cook. And so these people decided to join Dr. Chen, Mildred, Glad, and Joy decided to start the hunting mission, the house hunting mission to find the house or the home of the old cook. Yes. Um, now, when he went, he go back, uh, they, they tried to do that one, but they didn't find the house, of course. When he went back home, he was trying to pass through the, the newspapers. And as he was reading, he was trying to peruse the newspapers, he came across a certain advert, a certain advertisement in the newspaper. Uh, and that, newspaper, that, that advert say, uh, was, uh, Lea Chiki Nyabuti. Uh, above, there was, a, there was a photo above. Uh, went missing from her Muthaigia home about one month ago. She is 70 years old, light complexion and of slight heavy build. She was dressed in a light green frock and sweater when she was last seen. She speaks Kikuyu, Kikamba, Kiswahili and Eritro English and is slightly mentally disturbed. Anyone who 
Uh, anyone who might see her can telephone her son Johnson, K. Job, and then there's a number there, or call nearest police station. A reward of shillings, a hundred thousand, will be given to whoever helps in locating this woman. Remember, um, the amount which Joy owes the school is forty thousand. Now, finding cook. Someone would be paid a hundred thousand. So there's forty thousand he could pay for the school fees as a school fees, and then he could remain with six thousand in the in the pocket. You see that one now? Very 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 big deal here. And so Joel was very impressed to see that uh, that advertisement. Now chapter eight. In chapter eight, Joel not sit down the telephone number, and of course um, when he calls. That phone was uh, was uh, was not a uh, office uh, office office number, and so someone receives and tells, okay, now it tells him that uh, this is not a uh, office, this is just a home telephone, and so they give him a number directly where he can phone direct, uh, Mr. Job direct, and of course um, he rings him direct, but the response from the other side of the phone was not okay. The response from the other phone, the other side of the phone, was somehow hostile, was not good. The sound of the man on the other end of the phone telephone was bad. Joy was very, very disappointed with that situation. You see, uh, Njobu, why, why did it happen that way? It was simply because many people had already phoned to say that we have found this person, we have found this person, and when they go there, they find it's a different person, not the same, same person. And so, when Joe found, Job thought that it was the same group of people who are trying to say, uh, to get that money. And so, that's why he ignored. But, Job calls him the second time, and tells him where the lady is. And so, I uh, decided to, now Joe was very furious, and so what he did was just to call once again, Tell Mr. Jogu where the old lady is, and of course he, he banged the phone, and so there was no uh, no more communication. That's how it happened. That's how it happened. And <laughs> but uh, this was somehow uh, this was somehow uh, a miracle to Joy because what happened in the next day and uh, in this, the next episode we are going to see was somehow a godly plan. Godly plan. You can see what happened here. Now, uh, blood comes over and the two head to go to hospital as uh, he gives her a summary of the exciting news. Arriving at the hospital, Joy tells Dr. Cheng the news. Dr. Cheng is impressed for the updates. They wait for Job to call, but they are finally disappointed. That's what we expected. When they go there, Joy is somehow disappointed. But why? You will see here. You will see here. The problem is that when he comes, uh, when he visited the hospital, you will see what happened. But what happens here when he goes back home? He gives the story to David, and when he gives the story to David, David says that we have only one job in Nairobi. This is one billionaire, chairman and chief executive of Elephant Group of companies. We have only one job, and that is that billionaire. There's no other job. But now, what is it? Uh, what happened really at the hospital? What happened really at the hospital is that Kuku was not at the hospital. He was taken by the relatives. And so when he did, when he went there, they did not see uh, the old cook. It was very, very big disappointment. And that's, what, that's why he was very, very disappointed in that way. Uh, also here in chapter 9, uh, we get another flashback, uh, we are given another flashback on how uh, Joy escaped with his sisters since all men and boys were killed and some girls were raped and, uh, and how they reached, how they were collected at the Catholic Mission and how Jonathan now took them in and uh, we are given that uh, at least uh, uh, at least we are given that flashback when it comes to this chapter 9. And 
Joe, Uncle Jotham sent them to school. Remember, after the death of the parents, uh, these kids had been supported by this Uncle Jotham, and so he tried to take them to school. To school, of course, they were having a hard time as, as they were schooling because Rife, uh, Uncle Jotham had just married, and so he was not having that very big life. But at least he tried to support them in one way or another. So uh, in fact, that there was a problem. There was this is little problems of uh, this is small small family matters, food shortage and the right. But at least they tolerated and they were patient. At least at the end, things were not that bad because God was having a very good plan to them. Yes, and uh, when uh, when when David found this job. I tried to help Uncle in supporting the siblings in one way or another. Now, by the time Joey completed his fourth form, uh, the, his fourth form, uh, the school, as I said, 40,000 were needed and there had no money. Mary, uh, who was age now 22, uh, completed her training in nursing and of course he was also trying to support, uh, to pay for Lucy, the uh, young sister, uh, in the secretary, uh, in the secretary of college. So at least, he, uh, at least he, he was, she was supporting the family. So you can see that the family was trying, but the, the life was not that easy. Now, Joe thinks of his paternal grandparents since he had seen them when he was uh, young. We are told that their grandfather was Kibe and grandmother was Wacheke. We are also told of Joy's partner, Uncle Johnny, Johnny Kibe, who bought a scholarship and went to America to study business administration. Now try to check this connection, you will see later. Kibe family, Kibe family. So there is a, a, a grandmother, a grandfather, the name is Kibe. The grandmother, the name is Wacheke. Then there is this, there is this John Kibe, uh, who, who got a scholarship and went to live in... Uh, in, in, in America for studies, uh, the, for, for, for start, to, to start business administration. So remember these names because later you will have to use them. Yes, and now we get this uh, a full flashback of Joy's family is given. Joy calls at the hospital and Midred says that Coco is still there. Oh, sorry. Oh, I left this some story right here in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the last chapter. In the last chapter, you have to correct that one. Uh, in this chapter, the, the, the old book is still in the hospital. It's still in the hospital, it's not it's, it's discharged, but it's still in the hospital. Uh, I missed it somewhere a bit. So Joe and Daniel go to the hospital to see old cook. And here is where they meet that old cook was uh, no longer in the hospital. So uh, you find that they wonder how it happened, where uh, whether cook was, is, is dead or not. And they try to find the, the, the ways to find out uh, the, the whereabout of old cook, but there was no uh, way to, to, to find uh, to find uh, the old cook. She was no longer in the hospital, and she is nowhere to be seen. That was uh, somehow uh, bad news to to Joy. So um, later, this this uh, Joy's friend, the doctor, the the, the, the medic that is friendly. Tells, uh, tells Joe that uh, Mr. Job, Mr. Job came to collect uh, all the cook. Now remember, uh, at home, uh, they were discussing about this, this Mr. Job. And now here, we are told that Mr. Job is the same person who came to collect uh, the old cook. Now, now we, have find, we, have, we have found that uh, old cook is home at home now. But all in all, Joy is not aware. Joy does not know uh, how they are related, uh, they are not related to, is not related to, to, to Job right now. But at least he, he would like to say, he would like to say on Kuku in one way or another. Now, in fact, in chapter 10, for two days, Joy is like a zombie. Does not think properly, simply because, does not think properly, simply because he is thinking of old Kuku once again. Uh, but uh, anyway, after, after, after he came back to senses, uh, he went back to work. But as he went back to work, then this person came, this uh, uh, secretary, library secretary, miss, came to tell him that somebody was in need of seeing uh, uh, him. And so Tony Kibe, Tony Kibe came to, uh, came to, to visit uh, Joe, and of course he wanted to uh, take Joe to Mr. Joe. 
I, I don't know if you remember the, the name Kibe. Remember, Joel's grandfather is Mr. Kibe. Joel's grandmother is Wacheke. And then Kibe and Wacheke are having their son who went in America for studies. Now, right here, there is Tony Kibe who has come, who has come to correct him, uh, to, uh, to, 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 to take uh, Joel to Mr. Joe. Now, here, Joel is surprised somehow. So, uh, Joel asks for permission, uh, asks for permission, and of course, uh, they go direct, they go direct to Mr. Njogu, Njogu's place. Now, in chapter 11, we find that Joy enters the house of Mr. Njogu, and right there, we found that the house is very, 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 uh, uh, it's, it's just a rich family, very, very rich family. He has never thought of that one. He has, he has, not, he has never dreamt of that situation he was in now, and, and by then. And so, when he reaches there, during their stories, he gives them the whole story on how he started and that debt he was having at school, that he was supposed to pay 40000 eh, so that he gets the certificate. But then, as they were speaking, this Uncle Daddy comes in the house. At least, Joy and Uncle Daddy seems to be familiar to each other. Later, he comes to realize that Joy, Joy remembers uh, this Uncle Dan is the same same Daniel Kung who told him uh, uh, who, who told him that uh, the company does not tolerate lateness in the company and it does not tolerate lateness. It's the same same Daniel Kung. So uh, the, he was giving stories and like and then Daniel Kung comes in. So I was very surprised to find that uh, Dan also lives in, in Mr. Jogu's house. That's how it was. Now. They praised Joy for his good heart on how she, uh, he helped the uh, cuckoo and the like, the only cuckoo and the like. And then uh, Njogu promised to pay the 40000 for him. But more than that, instead of giving 100000 he decided to add one more. And so Joy was given 200000 uh, offer for, uh, and of, of course he was given uh, a job at, at the city soap industries. That's how it happened. So it was a, a miracle. And that's why I told you it was a God's plan for Joy to reach this uh, stage. It was a God's plan. You can see how it happened now. And uh, having uh, reached that stage, now they asked David to be fetched. So they decided to take the whole family that David should come this way and join that family. You know, as they were, uh, they were uh, meanwhile, they, they asked Joy to tell them his family. Now, by giving their, 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 by giving them their, their, their family, the family story, the family history, or the background of his family and the like, they came to realize that, uh, they came to realize that uh, Joy was real, uh, was the real dead son of Wacheke. Uh, whom, whom they call Cook. So Joy was a real grandson, grandson of Wacheke, or the old Cook. So the old Cook's name was Wacheke, who was the grandmother of Joy, but they didn't know each other. It was just a bloodline which was playing in. So God was planning something very big. And so uh, Joy was just a cousin of Joyce and Tony, Joe's children. Uh, so it was a very, very big coincidence. Now in the last chapter, in the last chapter, I found that Joe is happy to uh, he has uh, he has more money than he expected. Uh, he will have enough to pay, and of course will be remaining with some amount. Uh, but also uh, they, they 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 inform their sisters Lucy and Mary to accompany them for the reunion party, and so there was a family reunion party at Joe's mansion. That's how it happened, and so also Gladwell was. Uh, was invited. Gladwell was invited at this uh, reunion, uh, reunion um, uh, party. You see, top of that Joy has been offered. I hope you know that one. That uh, he is having. He is now employed as um, uh, as a worker at the uh, city soap industries. Now uh, these people, uh, these people, Mary, Rosie, Gladwell, Joy, and David. And we are now part of the family. They were received, and they were saved, and so there was a very, very, very big party. As you read in the story, you'll find that one. 
and the new the, the, the jackals come out also to meet these newcomers Cox sends Spito. Eh? I told you about spitting on the face as a blessing. And so uh, the grandmother uh, gave a spito to these children as blessings eh, on their heads to bless them. Okay. So they all break into a song and dance while tears of joy are wearing in their eyes. And of course, that is the end of the story. I was just giving you the summary of the story because I know that some of you have not even come across this book. You don't even know the color of this book. But at least that's the summary of the book itself. At least by having that narration, when it comes to thematic analysis and other analysis we are going to do, you will be in a good position to have good information. Thank you very much for watching and I welcome you again next time when I come to discuss the analysis of this novel, The Interview. Thank you and goodbye.